Coming up next on Unscripted Faith, what does it take to be a strong leader? What exactly does it take? Well, our guest today knows exactly what it takes and he knows how to make it happen. We're going to be joined by Michael Gear, president and CEO of the PA Family Institute. You're going to hear his incredible story and gain insights from a passionate leader who is dedicated to making an impact. Jay, let's lead the way because Unscripted Faith starts right now. Welcome everybody. It's so good to have you here on Unscripted Faith and I'm excited to have, we got one guest today, but he's going to fill up the whole show and uh, what he's going to share is going to be outstanding. I'm excited. I love these yeah. conversations. When you get to hear more of their story and understand where they're coming from, I think you guys are in for a treat. You are <laughs> truly in for our treat because our next guest has a vision for Pennsylvania as a state that not only honors God, but also embraces religious freedom. But he also believes in nurturing, thriving families and cherishing life. Michael Gear is the president and CEO of the PA Family Institute, and he joins us now. Michael, welcome to Unscripted Faith. Thanks, great to be with you, Jay and Angela. Yes. Uh, happy to be here in Pittsburgh and to have this opportunity to talk. Well, it's great because I did not realize this. You are kind of a homegrown guy, mm -hmm. and you actually had a start at WPXI. Yeah. Actually, I was a, a senior news producer of how I ended, up, ended my career there at Channel 11 before I went to Pennsylvania Family Institute, but uh, that's what moved me to Pittsburgh. I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area, I became a Christian in ninth grade, uh, just God gripped my heart and I gave wow. my life to the Lord in ninth grade. And then uh, through that time period, you know, went to college, did all of those kinds of things, and then uh, worked in television news a little bit while I was in college in Washington. And then a job opportunity came uh, open in Pittsburgh at WPXI as a producer and I uh, accepted that position, moved here to Pittsburgh. I worked there at Channel 11, which at that time was on the, on the north side on what's called Fine View Hill. I met, uh, in my job interview, met a wonderful Christian man there, a videographer, a cameraman there named Mark Johnston, and we became great friends. And uh, then shortly thereafter, met my wife uh, at the TV station. She was doing what, we, what they called vacation relief. Uh, it's just how God orders our lives. You know, you, know, you never know the things that God, the, the, yeah. the, the, the intricacies of God, how God works things out. She was there, just supposed to be there for two weeks. And uh, the person she was filling in for broke her legs on a ski trip while she was on vacation. So my wife and my, this woman uh, ended up there for quite a number of months and that's when we met and she became my wife and, and uh, that, that's kind of how well, we got started. We have a few stories like that here ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah God's definitely using the station to bring marriages together. Yes. <laughs> and you yep. said you were in Washington. That's where I was born and raised. Oh, okay. So how long were you in Washington? Uh, I moved there. Uh, my dad was in the TV business, so that's kind of, you know, it's sort of a, seemingly a family thing a little bit. Uh, so moved to the D.C. area when I was in, in uh, first grade and uh, then grew up there, went to the University of Maryland. And it was, uh, you know, so that was my whole growing up year was, uh, or growing up time was there in the D.C., in, in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. Well, now here I am, Michael. I messed up. I thought you meant Little Washington here in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So. But DC's the place. Washington. Yeah, that's big Washington. Big Washington. Well, I mean, that's let, right. <laughs> let me just tell you something because I think this will make you know the folks here in Pittsburgh feel proud, and they rightly should because I consider myself a Pittsburgher, even though I spent my growing up years there in Washington. But I, I was working in TV actually at the ABC affiliate in, in Washington D.C. while I was in college, and then they hired me full time out of college. And then I was offered this, this job in Pittsburgh, and I didn't know much about Pittsburgh and kind of had the stereotypical views, probably a dirty city, not, not a great place. And when the word got out in this news bureau there in Washington that I was, was moving to Pittsburgh and taking a job there, I can't tell you how many people came and said, oh, I, I used to live in Pittsburgh, or I grew up in Pittsburgh, that is the most wonderful place. And so I had this kind of nice feeling of moving here. And then I came here and I realized People in Pittsburgh are so friendly, they're so welcoming. You can become a Pittsburgher, even though you're not from here. People, you move here and you become a Pittsburgher. And though I've been out of the area now for 35 years since we started Pennsylvania Family Institute, I still kind of consider myself a Pittsburgher. Met my wife here, she's from Elwood City. Okay, And then, oh, uh, north? Yep, uh -huh. and then uh, found a great church, was married at, at a church, a, a 
kind of a new church at that time. It's Northway Christian Community, which is not new at all and very well known. Yeah. <laughs> there was a little ministry at that time, but not anymore. But uh, so Jay Passament was the pastor who married yes. Susan and me. And so it was a great mentor to me in, wow. in my life. So you mentioned about, um, you know, you were pretty much like born and raised. You're considered up a Pittsburgh and went off to DC, came yeah. back here, did a lot of stuff with news. How did you transition from the news world uh, into founding Pennsylvania Family Institute? So that's an interesting uh, question and story, and I, I see God's hand in that as well, and same as you know, how I met my wife and things. Is, uh, so I, I was always kind of a little bit interested in politics and paid attention to it, and, and as a Christian, grew more conservative over time, but didn't think about it a whole lot. I enjoyed my work in the television news. One of the things I liked about it was that uh, after the news broadcast is over, you don't have any care in the world because tomorrow's news hasn't happened yet. You know, so you kind of <laughs> just walk out of the newsroom, and, all right, today's done. But uh, so I enjoyed it. It wasn't like I was looking for something else to do. But back in around 1983, when uh, Susan was pregnant with our first child, uh, Christopher and she had you know that was the early days of ultrasounds and things and so we had an ultrasound picture of him it was on the on the refrigerator and things and we read a book it was called by uh, was written by a man named uh, John Powell it was called The Silent Holocaust and that gripped our hearts about the sanctity of life it was about abortion and, uh, and at that time the numbers of abortions and, and what God thought about it what the Bible said about it and things and so the the, the confluence of being pregnant and reading about you know, the unborn, and that was at that time, that's 1983, so that was, Roe versus Wade had only t been 10 years prior to that, yeah. but already it was a significant issue uh, gripping our nation, and one that I was not really awakened to until having read that book, and that convicted us that we needed to engage and do something about the abortion issue. So we went uh, to, uh, to our pastor, Jay Passavant, and expressed an interest in doing something about the life issue. And he listened and we prayed and, and was part of you know, a, a group that came together that uh, the church then sent, Northway sent uh, Susan and me down to a conference down in Florida. It was called, uh, I can't remember the name of the conference now, but, but anyway, it was at down at Coral Ridge Ministries, Dr. D. James Kennedy at the yes. time. Yeah. So a significant number of pro-life speakers were at that, at that event. And uh, we heard about a concept of starting pregnancy, uh, crisis pregnancy centers was the phrase that was used at the time. We came back then from that conference back to Pittsburgh, uh, just a weekend conference, with the idea of we need to see a pregnancy resource center, a crisis pregnancy start, center start in Pittsburgh. So through that and through the connections at Northway and other churches in the area and stuff like that, for about a year we worked about towards starting this pregnancy resource center, which became North. Uh, the North Pittsburgh Crisis Pregnancy Center, which now is a Women's Choice Network, Amy Shearing. Uh, we we hired on yesterday. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, she she uh, she's brilliant, wonderful, yes. godly woman. Uh, she was our first hire. So I was the chairman of the board. I was about 25 or six years old, uh, and we hired her. You know, counseling major out of the University of Pittsburgh. Somebody I went to church with as well, and God has just flourished that ministry. So that's how. It was the, the life issue that gripped us. And mm. then really through a men's group and through, through the church leadership and things, um, wanting to see more about how God might use my life in terms of advancing the sanctity of life and working on that issue, um, became more interested in engaging in the political realm in some fashion. And through that, um, ended up going to Regent University, got a master's degree in public policy, felt a direct call from the Lord to be engaged in the political realm. Came back to Pittsburgh, the TV station hired me back, but then I got a call out of the blue one day, hey, there's an organization that we want to get started, a family, what they call the Family Policy Council. Uh, we've heard about you, that you have a, a calling in this area, uh, would you help? And so we raised money for about a year, and then in, in the fall of 1989, we opened our doors. Wow. wow. With a full, one full time and a part timer. That's outstanding. Well, listen, there's a whole lot more that I know you have to share. I want to talk to you a little bit more about what's happening in PA family now that the election is over and what can happen uh, in our state. And also some questions about uh, just your impact on the election as well. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a whole lot more coming up with Michael. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other. 
one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in His counsel, and hear His wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness His Word manifest in your life and return to His promises for you. Ask for Prophetic Reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome to Dashing Dish. Ever since I was a little girl, I have loved sweets. In fact, baked goods are still to this day my favorite thing. But how do we make them healthy? Today my sister's gonna be joining me because she shares in my love for sweets and we're gonna be making some of our healthier versions of our favorite baked goods. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV bringing you programs like... Paul said in Philippians 2, God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. God will never ask you to do something and not give you the ability to do it. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith. We're here with Michael Gear, and we want to jump right into it. Michael, I think this is going to be an outstanding conversation with you to go into why does PA Family exist? Well, uh, Pennsylvania Family Institute is what's called a family policy council. We're one of about 40 such uh, organizations around the country in the different states that work on public policy issues and cultural trends that impact families. That's a broad kind of category impacting families. So much of, of what happens in government, what happens in culture impacts the families, the well-being of our children and stuff. So we work on a number of uh, issues and, and range of issues. Sanctity of life, marriage and family, religious liberty and school choice are kind of key components of the work that we do. We have a lobbying team in Harrisburg that uh, is regularly at the state capitol advancing those causes and fighting against things that undermine the well-being of families and, and uh, harm the culture. We have a law firm that's uh, called the Independence Law, F uh, law Center, Independence Law Center, with five attorneys on our staff, including one here in the Pittsburgh area, one uh, up near Mercer County as well, and then three uh, at our office in Harrisburg that uh, do litigation on those issues, on sanctity of life, and especially on religious liberty. have won two cases uh, that went all the way to the United States Supreme Court, uh, which is, you know, just a small percentage, a fraction of percentage of cases ever get to that level, and we have two victories wow. as in regards to that. They work with school boards and school districts around the state to advance policies on protecting girls' sports, on bathroom privacy, on the transgender issue, fighting that ideology that is pervasive in our society. So that's some of the work that we do. Then we, we do have something called the Church Ambassador Network. You know, the Bible is very explicit about praying for those in authority. And we've witnessed, I've witnessed over the 35 years we've been at Pennsylvania Family Institute, uh, the challenges that face those who are in, in public office, the elected officials, the, their marriages are under attack, their, their families are under attack, and the pressures, that the, the things they have to deal with are so significant. And so we connect pastors to pray and open scripture with elected officials, regularly at the Capitol, regularly in district offices to make a difference in that regard. And we have a school choice program that uh, provides scholarships for kids to attend Christian schools through the state's uh, ed education improvement tax credit program. So it's a wide ranging effort that we're engaged in and we've been growing. We started, as I mentioned, you know, when I moved from Pittsburgh to start Pennsylvania Family Institute, it was me and, and a half time person. Now we're up to a staff of about 20 by, by God's grace and we're entirely supported by uh, individual contributions, churches and, and businesses that support our work. We don't, we've never taken a penny of government funds and have no plans to do it. We want the folks who support our values and issues to get behind us and to help us in that regard. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. When you said there are about 40 of these across the yeah. nation, when did they come to be and what was, what kind of spurred that on? So uh, they, they, we're one of the earliest ones that started, and they were started really at the uh, encouragement and impetus of focus on the family and Dr. James Dobson. Okay. Back in the mid-80s, uh, you know, he was involved, uh, Dr. Dobson, many, 
I'm sure viewers yes. here are familiar with, with oh, Focus yeah. on the Family, yes. recognized that what was happening to families and the erosion and, the, and the, the, the challenges that were happening to families was not just an issue of erosion, but there were forces in government and public policies and things that were undermining families that were dividing mothers from children, all of those things, not just abortion, but so many things, the policies in our schools or the doctor's office, all of those different places where government was kind of pushing families apart rather than building them and strengthening them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Focus on the Family recommended that, uh, that the, there be startup of these state organizations to work on those issues at a state level. A lot of us kind of have a focus on Washington and Washington, we elect a president and everything's going to be fixed. But so much happens at the local school board level, at the state legislature, and all of those things that impact our day-to-day -day lives and how our families will fare. And so <clears throat> the other recognition was that every state is different. We're a federal system. And so I think wisely Dr. Dobson focused on the family, encouraged the startup of independent organizations that raise the support within the state so that there's a buy-in, there's an entrepreneurial spirit we have to build an organization that blesses Pennsylvania, that blesses Pennsylvania's families and is supported by Pennsylvanians and prayed for by Pennsylvanians. That's the way the system was set up and it's, it's working wonderfully. And very vibrant organizations around the country, these different family policy councils that are really doing great work in all these different states. Well, I've heard you mention the word policy several times, you know, in light of the election that just happened a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Um, I was completely shocked. I don't know if you were as well, the way that everything just went in a whole red direction. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure how that was going to go. No. If, um, if Kamala Harris would have gotten in, would your focus be different now? And twofold question, what is your focus now that we have more of a conservative leaning here in Pennsylvania? Sure. So one of the things that they say about uh, elections and about public policy and things is that personnel is policy. So when we elect a president, it's not just that person or even their, their personality, but all of the appointments that they make at all ranges of government. And so if you think about even the, the people that were in place in the Biden administration and some of the, I guess I'll call them characters, people who say, <laughs> man, this is kind of crazy. That person's right. in charge of this or whatever, and what qualifications do they have except for maybe there's some DEI qualification or something that, that's yeah. got them into that spot. Um, and those people really make the day-to-day -day di difference on you know, how you're going to do your farming or run your business or what your kids' schools are going to be like. And like we look at the Biden administration and the Title IX, the, the, the issue of uh, girls' sports and, and sex-separated bathrooms, all those things coming down from the federal government because of people in place that the president appointed. So a big difference here with, you know, with President Trump, ele President elect Trump, the, the people that he's going to be put in place are going to be vastly different than what we would have seen. And that makes a difference then of whether we will be at Pennsylvania Family Institute on defense related to policies that might come down from the Department of Education or, or Health and Human Services or whatever, or whether we can start doing some positive things and regain ground that has been lost by families in our state. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that. The defense or offense, kind of yeah. like the football we get so yeah. passionate about here in Pittsburgh. So kind of we got the ball in our court, but now it's our responsibility yeah. to, okay, how do we move it? You know, and, and a lot of people think, okay, you know, you put the field on the team yeah. or the, the team on the field, I should say, but it takes citizen involvement on an ongoing yes. basis. We think we pull a lever or fill out a little dot on a, a, on a form and then leave it to the elected people to do the different, to make the difference. We are called to be salt and light, to be engaged in our government and to, have, to roll up our sleeves and be involved. We, I talked about our church ambassador network and the prayer for those in authority, but also then our citizenship is a 24 hour or at least a 365 days a year, or at least some part of our life should be engaged in what's going on in our society, what's going on in our government, and how can we hold people accountable and engage to serve, uh, serve others and to, to bless our neighbor. That's so good, and I think that that personal responsibility is so important because especially during election season, you see all these passionate people going crazy on social media and yeah. everywhere else, but I always say, don't do it there. Put feet on the ground. Do something that is impactful. So for the person, you know, we're praying. We are good citizens. We're good neighbors. What can they do on a practical level that can truly change from day to day or week to week, change their region or change this state and nation? Well, there are a number of things. I mean, first thing, I, I would just encourage people to, to check with our website at pafamily.org and sign up for our uh, email alerts and things so that they can be educated and understand the things that are going on. So when we're talking about praying, they can pray intelligently, but then engage right. in those sorts of things. So we just came through a big election season just a couple of weeks ago. 
But now we have uh, school board elections in uh, 2025 coming in Pennsylvania. Those are very significant in what happens. And the in individual involvement of going to school board meetings or backing candidates who stand for the right things and then supporting those candidates after they make good decisions after they're elected mm -hmm. are vitally important. Something that, that many viewers might not be know about, but Planned, Parent, he, Planned Parenthood here in Pennsylvania, a big abortion cartel organization, mm -hmm. uh, has started to endorse school board candidates at the local level in Pennsylvania. Wow. Now you'd be like, why is Planned Parenthood doing that? Yeah. Wow. They're doing that because they have their sights on the children. There's a variety of different things. They have explicit sex ed books and all those sorts of things, which then fosters a sort of pipeline towards early sexual involvement that for fosters a pipeline to then their abortion industry as well. And Planned Parenthood is also now the number one provider of the cross-sex hormones and the puberty blockers and things for minors and for adults for those who are seeking the so-called sex change things. Yeah. So Planned Parenthood has their sights on our kids. Yep. We can sit on our hands and think, well, I'm not gonna get involved with school board elections or I don't even know what to do. We would like to help people to get engaged and to be involved in those sorts of things. That's what our law center with the, the policy advice that we're providing is helping in that regard, but also citizen involvement can really make a difference. And as local as you can be, that makes a really big difference. Well, we so appreciate you. Uh, we had Kurt Weaver on. I'm a, I'm a part of the Church Ambassador Network. I've sat down with different individuals. He's opened up some doors for me to talk with senators, which has been outstanding. Thank you for what you're doing. We also had Robert Albino on oh, yeah, Robert. Uh, not too long ago as well. And now we have, I said, the big dog is on. Yeah. So the founder in chief <laughs> is in the house. So thank you so much, Michael, for hanging out with us here on Unscripted Faith. Great to be here. Well, listen, we're going to check in now with Tom and see where he takes us in the book of Acts with this week's Spirit Walk. You know, as we go through the book of Acts, there's some things and there's some things in the Bible that are very easy to understand. It's easy to know that God loves us. Maybe it's hard to understand why he does, but it's pretty clear that God loves us. And it's pretty clear that he offers salvation to everyone. Then there's some things in the Bible that are very difficult to understand. And that's what we have in this chapter of Acts. We have the story of Ananias and Sapphira. I'm sure you know the story. Ananias and Sapphira sold some land and gave the money to the apostles. A lot of people were doing that. They saw the importance of the gospel and they were giving everything to it. Except that Ananias and Sapphira lied about it. And because they did, they both died under the judgment of God. Peter just spoke to them and they fell over. Boy, that's hard to understand, isn't it? It's hard to know why God does that. He gave, he gave Israel so many chances, but right then and there, one lie, they fell over. You know, we all want to see God move in might and power, but this was a special time of visitation, this time of the book of Acts. It was very unique. I mean, miracles were happening. Flames were on people's heads. The spirit was falling. People were getting healed. Tremendous things were happening. Most of all, thousands of people were turning to Christ and following him, following the gospel. And when God visits that way, we need to really have a reverence for God because, uh, I mean, we should always have a reverence for God, right? We should always fear the Lord. That means to revere him, to have respect for him. But man, when he is visiting like that, when he is moving in might and power, it is not the time to fool around. You can think of a lot of times in the Old Testament where God's presence was there and the people, the enemies of God were judged. Now, Ananias and Sapphira have fallen over dead. I, again, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Well, you know, would we love it if the Spirit was moving in might and power like that in our churches right now? And then somebody, I don't know, doesn't pay their tithe and they fall over dead? Well, we'd have a difficulty with that too. But it did produce an incredible reverence for God among the believers. I mean, a fear. I mean, if your brothers and sisters start falling over dead because they lied, that would produce holiness and fear. And those were key things, important things. Reverence is an important thing to see the move of God. Just one final thing. You know, the Bible doesn't say anything about Ananias and Sapphira related to their salvation. Were they saved? Were they judged and went to hell? The Bible's silent. But I like to think that even though they were judged in their actions, they were still saved through the power of Jesus Christ. But again, the Bible's silent on the matter. So sometimes we have to wrestle. Sometimes at a difficult part of Scripture that you don't understand, go to God with it, wrestle with it, and come out the other side 
understanding more about who he is. That's part of our spirit walk too. I love Tom's spirit walk, Jay. And I think that, you know, even that idea of walking through the book of Acts and seeing the character of God, it allows us to examine ourselves always. Yeah. You know, where are the places that I would be smoked by God? Where am I not re revering him? You know, where am I yeah. not giving him everything that's in my hands? You know what, as he was talking, I was thinking about um, the scripture says, arise and shine for thy light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Everybody wants the glory of God, but yeah. we shouldn't be so quick to want that. That's because right. when the glory shows up, judgment is present. So what we're seeing in the news today, uh, we take a look at the P. Diddy case that's happening. We take a look at the Epstein and the Weinsteins, and we can go on and on of all the people that have been exposed. Yeah. It means, now check this out, Andrew, it's powerful. It means the glory is here. Because the reason why the glory, we know the glory is here is that there is exposure of what's in the oh. dark. It's not, that's why, it, and the reason why the church isn't being exposed is because we have the blood. Mm. If you have the blood, the death angel has to pass over. So when God shows up where the blood has not been applied, judgment has to be, has to be swift. So that's what we saw with Ananias the fire because the glory was there. God had to immediately judge in that moment. So I believe that we're in a season that we should be excited about the fact that the glory is returning back to the body of Christ. And I believe yes. that's why we're seeing so much exposure, but that's why also the church is about to arise and shine. Yeah, I love that. And I think that too, even in the, some places where the exposure has come to the church, yeah. I think those moments, well, yeah. right? We, we yeah. know that those moments all are for his glory alone, right. the glory to God. Amen. You know, these are the moments that can allow us to be um, purified. Yeah. Like Isaiah, that coal can be taken to our lips, to our eyes, to everything around us so that we can arise and shine, not arise and be dim or look like the world, but shine and stand out from it. That's right. And I think that's why it's important. Someone like Michael that came on, yeah. uh, we need to be involved in the political arena. We need to be yeah. educated on the local elections. Yes. How important are local elections to you? Do you, do you, what would you say to people about how important they are? Oh my goodness. I love that he brought out the point of the school being involved in the school board because that hits home, right? Even yeah. though my kids are in Christian school, I know some of the things that are taking place within our local district. Mm -hmm. And gosh, would I love to see candidates in there who are making a difference and pushing back all the uh, sexually explicit material in the libraries and the education that is coming for them. Yes. And that's where we do it. Yeah. I love that he brought that to us. I think that's really important because we have a lot of passionate believers, Jay. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of very vocal people about politics, but it doesn't matter how vocal you are or how excited you get about it until you do something to change the tide. That's right. That's right. Well, as a matter of fact, my wife and I, we went to the local school board that we were in because they had a book called all Boys Aren't Blue, which is a sexually explicit book mm. that they had available for kids mm -mm. that was just, mm -mm. I mean, it was, I can't even tell you the things that mm -mm. were in it. So it's important that we get involved in our local elections and all things. It's very, very important. Yeah, we can't be all irate and upset that all oh, this stuff's happening. If we shine, then we'll allow, we'll be able to see the world changed, right? Through Jesus. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.